In Through the Woods, we meet Laura Langley, a freelance investigative reporter. Laura Langley, who is unemployed. She has inherited a cabin in the woods due to the fact that nobody else wanted it. While on the way, she ignores vital plot information. A younger Sam Elliott tries to conceal his boner while showing her the property. Laura calls attention to some foreshadowing. In the past, this area was a logging camp. Frederick Langley, the foreman of the lumber camp, used fear to keep his family secluded. He told his daughter Lucy to never leave the house and strongly alluded to rape. His wife seemed intrigued. Unfortunately, Lucy had undiagnosed ADD and did whatever the fuck she wanted. Hilarious antics ensue. We meet Jack Lombardo. I get it! Using his epic breakdancing skills, he Kill the bear! Jack mocks Lucy's stutter to the point that she has to change her name. She tries to appease the brute by giving up her only piece of jewelry. While concealing her inner rage. Back in the present, Laura Langley lunges through her new home. Putting on Lucy's locket causes her to develop a stutter of her own. We return to the past, which is now in sepia tone. The evil lumberjack is trying to chop down a tree while the good lumberjack holds it in place. It's at this point that the gods realise these characters look too similar and should be easier to differentiate. In the present again, Laura sees a little girl outside. She goes out to find her, struggling to see in the dark, but making sure her ass is well lit. She then climbs some invisible steps which lead her to the cabin where the past is kept. John Slatcher reveals himself to be a male feminist when Frederick bursts in to announce that Lulu is missing. All of the lumberjacks, including the young Obi-Wan Kenobi, agree to look for her. Apart from Jack, who was hauling an unrelated child-sized body bag into the woods. As he returns to the scene of the crime, John arrives and immediately becomes irredeemable. At which point, one of the lumberjacks decides to run and tell Frederick that Jack has murdered his daughter. Understandably, Frederick becomes concerned for Jack's well-being, but he's sadly too late and Jack is executed. Then the background changes and we return to the present. Laura enters Jack's cabin, disrespects the art of taxidermy, and smashes his furniture. Reinvigorated by a need to protect his shit, Jack climbs down from his noose and reclaims his axe before Laura can break that as well. Laura becomes unconscious for her own and everyone else's safety. Upon awaking, she fails to read the room, and then makes a callback to the vital plot point she had ignored in the car. Laura makes Jack question his own existence, so he summons Spectral Wolf in defence. She scratches her butt on a nearby tree. Jack catches Laura up on the story so far. Laura seemingly falls into a coma, at which point Jack takes off her clothes and does with her as he wishes. Laura's scoliosis starts acting up as she learns the difference between ghosts and vampires. Laura goes to the local library to check out the extreme Ghostbusters on VHS and their entire collection of goosebumps. Luckily, they contain only reliable and accurate information on ghosts. We also see the result of all those lunges. We return to the past, as Frederick begins to get over the death of his beloved Jack, he finally remembers he had a daughter. Enraged by that memory, he tries to kill the first man he sees, who had somehow managed to compress all of the colour in the world into one ribbon. To his surprise, he is outmatched, and has to go home to die on his doorstep while his wife sits by the window grieving over her lack of peripheral vision, a trait that stayed in her bloodline for 100 years. Having slept for almost an entire day, Laura decides the world will adjust to her schedule, and sets off to work, taking joy in denying Hatchet a ride. The animal kingdom revolts. Arriving at the old folks home in the dead of night, Laura decides to break in and demands that it be made easy for her. Upon entering, Laura finds an old man who has choked to death on ghost cum. Not wanting to feel left out, she slurps up what she can. A shadowy figure jumps in to defend the man's virtue, and then turns into John Slatcher, who it turns out has been volunteering at the retirement home and is determined to retrieve his cum. A staunch believer in free love, Hatchet disapproves, and Slatcher is forced to retreat in order to better develop his argument. Meanwhile, a hundred years ago, Frederick is still dying. Will Laura find out which member of the Langley family she descended from? Will Hatchet get to ride in a car? Will John Sletcher find his way back to the cabin through the woods? Discover the thrilling conclusion in part three.